You are set to co-star in HBO's new series, The Break, alongside Jack Black and Tim Robbins. What is the premise of this new series? The premise is uh, we follow the lives of four basic characters, Jack Black, Tim Robbins, Asif Manbi, and Pablo Schreiber, as their stories intertwine during the geopolitical chaos trying to avert World War III. I play the president, Julian Navarro, a, uh, uh, the, first, another, the next first Latino president on TV. But it's a comedy. It's kind of a black comedy that uh, you can loosely describe it as a, a cross between the West Wing mash and Dr. Strangelove. Now you mentioned how you're playing the leader of the free world. What was it like pre preparing to, to play the commander-in-chief? It's interesting. I, I think my whole life I've been thinking about what it would be like to be a president. I mean, I, I grew up at the, in the era post-Kennedy, and uh, who I believe was the last truly kind of independent president that we've had. Everybody else seems to have uh, other interests beholden that they're beholden to. So I look at him as a Latino Republican version of Kennedy. Now, you mentioned earlier how you are playing a Latino president, one of the very few Latinos in Hollywood to play this role. You are very active in the Latino community. You have also created the National Hispanic Foundation for the Arts. What drove you to, to uh, create this organization? Well, I was one of the founders, which include Jimmy Smith, Sonia Braga, and Felix Sanchez, who is our president. And what we notice is that we go to the movies more than the average American. We consume their product beyond our numbers, yet we're represented way and far below our numbers. And when we are represented, we're not always represented well. So we thought, well, how do you change that? And you change that, in my opinion, what we've been trying to do is by raising money to support Americans of Latino descent who excelled in their school. And like, you know, if you want to be a producer, if you want to be an actor, a writer, if you want to be behind the camera as well, we want to make sure that we have Latinos who are excellent in their, in their fields of expertise and we want to help them by not only raising monies to help them finish their thesis, but uh, also to help connect them to the industry. The industry is always looking for the right people to connect to their projects and people of this background are kind of underrepresented in, in their producerial staff. So we want to help connect people to the marketplace that will use them and hopefully that will change the, the landscape because if the folks behind the scenes understand who we are and are made up of us, I think they'll be less likely to stereotype us and disparage us. What's the, the feeling you get knowing that you are helping somebody who otherwise wouldn't have the opportunities if it wasn't for you and your organization? What, what does that give you inside? How do you... Well, it, it feels very good because, you know, we can all just work for ourselves and our individual success, but I think if we all succeed, it, it's a sweeter success. I mean, you know, what good is having freedom if someone else doesn't? What good is having wealth next to someone who's starving? And I think, you know, without, you know, being some sort of ideological uh, dictator, that you can not only take care of yourself and be self-reliant, but if you're really successful, you can make sure the people around you are not in unnecessary need. I don't believe in giving people everything they want for free and for no effort. I believe in helping people earn their keep, earn their living, earn their opportunities to succeed. But you know what? Sometimes you have to share your knowledge, your contacts, and your money. Now, when it comes to uh, earning, you have definitely earned your place in Hollywood. What was it like as a young, hungry actor trying to go from agency to agency and trying to get picked up? It's tough, you know. You have so much to offer and, and you, you know, you feel like you're a star to your family and your friends who always believe in you and say, hey, you can do this, you can do this. But when you get to Hollywood, everybody wants to be a star. Everybody wants to be successful. And all of a sudden you feel like just a tiny pebble on a very big beach. So you have to figure out a way to stand out. You have to figure out a way to do so without kind of overstepping your bounds. You gotta really pay attention and see what others do that work and that doesn't work. We have to learn from our mistakes and keep at it. If you keep at anything, you will eventually become better if it's what you're meant to do. Now, if it's not working and you don't have passion for it, it's okay, find another job. But if you have a, a Zen for this, a Yen, you know, if you have that, like, el gozo, they say in Spanish, this joy 
while you're doing your craft, it's not about the money, it's not about the fame, it's about knowing you were doing what you were born to do. That keeps you going a lot more. Did you ever come close to quitting? You know, every once in a while I wonder, is it all worth it? Because, you know, we get high and we get low. What you folks out there think is a very successful person sometimes is a person who's insecure about their next move. Sometimes you work and work and work and all of a sudden for months the phone doesn't ring. And you're like, wait a minute, but I've done all this stuff. So there's no guarantee. You know, as young, I used to think, okay, once I make my first big movie, they'll discover me and they'll see that I was, you know, it'll be easier. Yes, it's hard now, but once I get over that hump, oh, it's downhill from there, coasting, meaning it's an easy ride. No, it's not that, and it shouldn't be that. What happens is you figure out that the journey is the destination. Learning how to love what you do, whether or not it pays off right away, will keep you able to do it a lot longer. And chances are the longer you do it, the better your odds are paying off. You speak about you know, getting over that hump, finally getting your first big break. What was the project for you that finally opened those doors? For me, it was two projects, I think. I think uh, in feature films, Bad Boys put me on the map with Sean Penn, the original, not the one in the 90s. Uh, um, but La Bamba kept me there, you know. La Bamba was a classic and a, a, a film that you don't see in decades. It's just nothing like it because it, it really combined. It was a synthesis of Americana, rock and roll, Latinos, and, you know, it, had a, it, it, it took itself to another level because of all the talent that came together to make it shine. And it wasn't just a success in Latino audiences and homes. It was a success that reached a universal um, appeal to audiences outside of the traditional category. So I was very happy to be a part of a, a film that let me shine, that let me play a real human being, not just the bad guy, but a fully crafted and three-dimensional person who had a lot of pain underneath the things that he did that got him in so much trouble. When it comes to La Bamba, you know, it's obviously an, an iconic film. It doesn't matter what race you are, everybody enjoys that movie. What was it like on, on set every day? What was the environment like? You know, it's hard to describe because you go to work and you just, you, you have your mission. And I, I was a young man, I was 23 at the time, playing somebody older, playing Richie's older brother. And, uh, and Lou Diamond Phillips was actually 24. So he was older than me and I'm playing his older brother. But I took him under my wing, or at least that's what I felt like, you know, because I'd already done Bad Boys and he hadn't done any major features at that time. And, you know, it was like a family that I never had for three, four, five months that we got to rehearse and shoot. And it's, um, it's pretty epic, I gotta say. I remember now the things we did, the rehearsals, meeting the real Valenzuela family, meeting the real Bob Morales was a blessing. I, you know, I don't think I ever would have had as specific a performance had I not met the real Bob Morales and all of his mannerisms and proud Chicanismos, you know? The Mexican hello as they go, Ike, you know, that, whole, <laughs> that pride thing, you know? That, that's just, it's something I would not have come up on my own. Well, Isai, when it comes to your career, it's spanned it over, 30, over three decades, and you know the list goes on and on, from NYPD Blue to Resurrection Boulevard, La Bamba, of course. What is your advice for any young actor who's trying to make it into this business and follow your footsteps? Well, it's hard to encapsulate advice, because <clears throat> everybody has their own set of challenges. But I tell people, you are unique, whoever you are. Find out what's so unique about you and, and, and hang on to that. You know, don't try to be like everybody else, but learn from everybody else. You know, Li love to learn and learn to love. You have to have your emotions right nearby. Don't bottle yourself. Don't, you know, don't harden your heart. Find places inside of you that allow yourself to feel, that allow yourself to wonder. You know, give yourself all the colors of the rainbow because in the hard, cruel, cold, cruel world that I came up with, emotions and showing your feelings can be a disadvantage. It could leave you vulnerable. But suffocating them can kill you artistically. You know, some guys are just too hard to feel. You know, they just, they won't open up. They're not gonna make good actors because you have to have all your faculties. You have to be in touch with your humanity and that which makes you care about another person, makes you care about your character. You have to stay in touch with your emotions.